All right, I think this video is very long overdue. So why are people talking about Sub-Zero? Like, what's going on with Sub-Zero? People are using him more. People are talking about him. What the fuck is so new about Sub-Zero? That's Customs. Customs, in my opinion, really changed this character. My biggest problem with Sub-Zero back then was you had to pick something. Whether it was you want safety, pick his third. You want an amplified ice ball with a move that's not slide and does a little bit more damage. I guess pick a second. You want to be a little shit, throw axes, and do random slides out of nowhere. Pick his first. I think it's that. It's in that order. I don't remember. But you guys get the fucking point. Point is, you had to pick something with Sub-Zero. I did not like that. I was not a fan of that shit. That shit to me was... I did not like the fact that the variation system was holding Sub-Zero back, in my opinion. Now that we have customs... Sub-Zero, in my opinion, just jumped a bunch of tiers. Why did he jump a bunch of tiers? You know, I feel people are saying, oh, he has really good damage now. He's always had good damage. He's always been a corner character. But now with, like, Rising Ice and Ice Ball, like, the fact that you can do Ice Ball and also have your little 50-50s, like, it kind of changes things. Like, you could now, you know, from full fucking screen, in a way, whatever, and then start, you know, loading up your freaking slides and stuff much easier and it's like little things like that right and he also has more hit advantage off of his pokes i don't know if this was a thing back then but now if you land a down one a down three you can go into his overhead and your opponent cannot poke out or jump out of that that's like guaranteed right there you land a down one you land a down three i believe this was not a thing back then if i'm wrong let me know but i remember i tried doing this and i would get poked out now that's not a thing. Your opponent can actually not poke out of that shit. It's kind of wild. So in my opinion, I'm going to tell you guys what makes Sub-Zero really good. One is his in and out game. His in and out game is really terrifying. If you let a Sub-Zero player get away with this, what do I mean by his in and out game? Like his ability to just stagger you and step back. His like standing one is so good. Zero, one, two... They're just really good for just that. And his movement, like, Sub-Zero's movement is really, really good. Just going in, stepping out. Like, being able to do stuff like this, stepping out, and, like, just such a good button to just make your opponent whiff and clip them. You can be completely safe. And also, this one stepping all the way back out. So, like, you can do something like this, whatever, and you do something like this. And then make your opponent just walk into shit. It's really good. Not only that, staggering into grabs as well. One, two. And the nice thing about those strings is that, let's say, you were not expecting your opponent to block them. You get so much. You get hit advantage of 18. You can do your overhead. You can go into your low. You can go into your grab game. There's a lot. There's definitely a lot. And all of his staggers, in my opinion, really benefit this play style that a lot of sub-zero players are just being able to do something like this stepping back and throwing that shit out or doing something like this or one two baiting some shit and like just damn near everything he has is completely safe like everything he has is completely safe and you can really fuck with your opponent we don't know if you're gonna step back because there's a ton of space you don't know if you're gonna get grabbed you don't know if you're going to do this and you walk into a fucking overhead. His just the, his ability to be in and out is really good. His movement really like benefits this style that a lot of Sub-Zeros are known for. And a lot of Sub-Zero players, they have this fundamental of just being able to stagger, step back, make your opponent pay for poking. You know, anyone could mix motherfuckers up with Sub-Zero. Anyone. But like... Probably the best player I've ever played against is a Sub-Zero player that never throws his overhead. Uh, that's the only hit I'm giving. One dude that I would train with back then, he was a Sub-Zero player. He would never throw his overhead. I would be on the mic and tell him, dude, what is your fucking problem? You're giving me PTSD. Why aren't you throwing the overhead? And his reasoning for not throwing the overhead, he says it's too predictable. But yet, he would handicap himself and just you know really play the game really well he would have punished me for poking just back that it's his movement is really good and his staggers are really good another thing that's really good is that he has let's be real brain dead crushing blows like like 
Actually, before I get to his crushing blows, one really big thing about Sub-Zero that makes him terrifying, that makes Sub-Zero a really good character that people fail to realize is that when you when your opponent lands ice, whether it is full screen or up close, people break out of this. And they're left with no resources against Sub-Zero. Where you have to guess between a freaking low, a overhead, and his grab game. Can we just think about it? I'll do this, right? Let's make him break, right? Let's just make Joker break. I'll do some shit like this. Whatever. You get grab. Let's say I'll grab him, right? i make him just stand up. Whatever, right? He breaks out. Gets grabbed. Has to guess again. It's like, for real. Like, waking up to Sub-Zero with no meter, you just have to, like, just pray that you wake up buttons and hit them. Or you have to block that shit. For the most part, if you're playing against a Sub-Zero that understands how to actually use Sub-Zero when your opponent's waking up, you're fucked. He will full combo punish you. It's just his strike game is disgusting. And, like, when he just touches you, like, it's best just just to like not break out of that shit and just have resources for the next one honestly just take the damage not only that but he can literally go for unbreakable damage as well or he could be a vortex character as well like he could do something like this right and then and then you have to guess from right here it's like come on he could there's so many ways of using sub-zero and if you mix all of these you're, you're really gonna throw your opponent off and that fact that he has a grab that leaves your opponent right there, and if they already don't have resources, that's very strong. That is very, very strong. Low starter, overhead starter, throw gain. Like, really? That's kind of wild. That's another thing that makes Sub-Zero really, really good. Not only that, but like, as I was saying, his crushing blows. Now, the fact that you don't need to have that stupid-ass shoulder move, which I think it's cool, you have... His crushing blows are just, honestly, some of the best in the game. You know, in the corner, you have really easy shit to do. Easy crushing blows. You can get, like, 40% off of that shit. He has a grab crushing blow. That's really fucking good. He His slide one is, like, man, think about that shit. Let's just really think about um, all of his crushing blows, right? Let's see if I missed out on anything. Eight or more, right? His also his overhead one. Let's say, boom, thirty percent. You have no bars. Oh my fault. Right. Uh, let's let's right. Let's do this just right. All right. Boom. You get clipped. Right. Whatever. Blah blah blah. You get hit. This is real. This actually happens in matches. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere. This happens. This is real. This is a very realistic thing that happens. This has happened to me where I have a crazy ass health lead and then crushing blow after crushing blow. It's, you know, that's one thing that I feel Sub-Zero players need to be mindful of is adding up them slides. Add them shits up. Know when to use them. Enforce whiffs into your overhead. The fact that you can do this and if your opponent's mashing, that's a crushing blow right there. And then his grab crushing blow as well. Well, I believe that's his back one. Definitely be mindful of his crushing blows. Know the know the fact that in a round you could like do this. Like you have a grab crushing blow, you get that shit. That's thirty right there. Let's say you I don't know you'll do something super simple like that. You can get more than that. And then he also has that corner crushing blow, and also with rising eyes. Come on. Don't play with me now. Sub Zero is really good. Just off his crushing blows alone, off his movement, off his throw game. I know a lot of people like to bitch and moan about his mix ups and stuff like that. I think they're really good. But I feel like people just over exaggerate them because, you know, people think that's some scrub ass shit that he has this. But in my opinion, like, why not? Like, fuck it. Like, you can't get mad at that shit. You cannot get mad for getting hit by shit like this there's times like dude i blocked that what the hell and just i think people just take the game way too serious honestly i think how sub-zero is is fine 
I, I, I think his design is cool. I honestly, I think he's a fun character to play. Um, but yeah, I think he is a character that pisses a lot of people off. Me, not so much. But I enjoy his general, honestly. I think he's a really good per character, but I feel like people don't truly understand like the little things. His movement, his in-and-out game, being able to make your point of whiff and stuff. So there's that holly haul back. Deuces.